the last pattern of inheritance which is deviating from, from the Mendelian pattern is linkage and in the coming in the video 4. Thomas Hunt Morgan was a person who conducted experiments on Drosophila melanogaster that is fruit fly. See we can see a female and a male fruit fly. Okay, experiments were conducted by uh, Thomas Hunt Morgan similar to the dye hybrid experiments conducted by Grigor Johann Mendel on garden pea very much similar and also he found that all Mendel's laws were applicable the first law of dominance the second law of segregation but he noticed that the third law of independent assortment was not applicable to the uh, fruit flies. Okay, before going into his experiments and the conclusions he derived, let us see the advantages of using fruit fly. What was the advantage of fruit fly? First advantage you can get from the picture itself, the male and the female drosophila or the male and female uh, fruit fly can be easily distinguished. male and females can be easily differentiated. Second difference, the uh, second advantage is that they can be easily synthesized, easily produced or cultured in the lab. In the lab in synthetic medium they can be very well easily cultured. Not only that even you can prepare this at home. You make a squashed preparation of raw of a ripened banana or ripened uh, grapes, mango, etc. And you can see fruit flies come, lay eggs, and it develops into caterpillar, pupa, and finally a number of fruit flies. Many many fruit flies are formed. So it can be easily synthesized. See, I've shown you the picture of a synthetic medium where it is synthesized in the lab. See, a number of drosophila can be synthesized on a synthetic medium also. Then their life cycle is very short, just 2 weeks, equivalent to 2 weeks. Fourth advantage is in one mating they produce many offsprings. And the last advantage even under the low power of the microscope they can be easily studied, the cytology can be studied or the heredity variations can be studied. They have only 4 chromosomes and that can be observed under the low power of the microscope. So once again advantages of genetic experiments. The first advantage is that the male and female drosophila can be easily distinguished from one another. Second, they are easily synthesized. They can be synthesized in synthetic culture medium or they can be synthesized naturally, very easy to culture them. Third, the life cycle is very short, just two weeks. Fourth, many offsprings are produced in one mating. And last and important uh, advantage is that they have only 4 chromosomes, so the heredity variation or the cytology can be studied even under the low power of a light microscope. Thomas Hunt Morgan came out after his experiments, he conducted two sets of experiments I told you as similar to the dye hybrid crosses conducted by Grigor Johann Mendel on garden peat was so much similar. Okay, And from all these experiments he derived 5 conclusions. The first and foremost conclusion is he derived at the definition called linkage. He only proposed linkage. So what is linkage? Physical association of genes on a chromosome. It's simple as that. If this is a chromosome, a homologous chromosome, if there are two genes. This is one gene and this is the other gene. This association of genes on a chromosome is known as linkage. Now I uh, showed you one example, another example I will show you with another color. This is a chromosome and two, uh, two genes on the chromosome. Look, two genes are located here and look at these two genes, they are physically associated. And here also they are physically associated. But the difference between these two, if this is A 
chromosome and this is B chromosome. The difference in these two is here the genes are loosely linked and here the genes are tightly linked. Clear? So, the first point he derived is the definition physical association of genes on a chromosome is known as linkage, usually two genes. Second, as I showed here, some genes are loosely linked. See, the A is depicting loosely linked and some genes are tightly linked. So, the second he derived is this, some genes are tightly linked as in the case of B and some genes are loosely linked, clear? Then third conclusion he derived is that tightly linked gene shows low recombination frequency and loosely linked gene shows high recombination frequency. Once again I am repeating, tightly linked genes shows low recombination frequency and loosely linked gene shows high recombination frequency. This was derived from an experiment which will be taken shortly. Let me complete the five uh, observations he derived. Then the fourth observation, recombination was the result of crossing over. You all have learnt in 11th standard what is crossing over, which stage it takes place, meiosis 1, prophase 1, pachytene stage, crossing over takes place. Okay. And the fifth point he derived is that link genes follow the first law of dominance. The first law of Mendelism that is law of dominance, the second law of Mendelism that is law of segregation of gametes, but it does not follow the third law that is linked genes do not assort independently. So, these are the five conclusions he derived at working on dihybrid crosses on Drosophila melanogaster. Once again, I am repeating one, the definition physical association of two genes on a chromosome is called linkage. Some genes too, some genes are tightly linked, some genes are loosely linked. Then 3, tightly linked genes shows low recombination frequency whereas loosely linked genes shows high recombination frequency. Fourth point, the reason for recombination was crossing over and lastly linked genes follow the first law and second law of Mendelism but does not follow the law of independent assortment. Now, he derived at point 2 and point 3 from the experiment which is shown in figure 5.11 of your textbook. So, look at figure 5.11, I am magnifying it. So, here what you have to do is you have to concentrate on the two crosses, look make a comparison between two crosses, cross A and cross B. Here you can see in cross A it is a cross between yellow white normal drosophila with yellow white wild variety. So, it is a cross between the normal variety and the wild variety. The wild variety is dominant, but here it is indicated with a superscript plus at the superscript. So, here you can see once again the parents are yellow white normal and yellow white wild variety. And look. Now look at the genes YW of the two parents, the normal variety and the wild variety. You can see the YW genes are closely linked, they are closely linked. But look at cross B, you have to compare this column with the cross B column, ready look at cross B, there the character taken into consideration is white miniature wings, the wings are white and miniature small of a normal variety and a wild variety and look at the genes, look they are distantly located. So, they are examples of loosely linked genes and this is an example of tightly linked genes. So, cross A is a cross between tightly linked genes and cross B is a cross between loosely linked genes. And uh, finally, in F2 generation what is found is that look at the F2 result, just look at the F2 result, concentrate only at the result. F2 result you see in cross A the parental combination is 98.7 percentage, nearly 99 percentage is parental, but recombination just 1.3 percentage, which means that tightly linked genes shows low recombination. But look at cross B, just look at the result of F2 generation, all of you have to just jump to F2 generation and look at the cross, look at the parental combination. 
62.8 percentage, nearly 63 percentage is parental and look at the recombination 37.2 percentage. Now what you have to do, compare the recombinants of both the crosses. The recombinants of cross A and the recombinants of cross B. Now re recombinants of cross A see just 1.3 percentage, just below 2 percentage whereas recombinants of cross B is nearly 37.2 percentage. So which means that recombination frequency is high for cross B. Why the recombination frequency is high? Because the genes on the chromosomes are loosely linked. Here why the recombination frequency is low? because the genes on the chromosome are tightly linked, they are very close to each other, clear? So this, from this experiment, he derived the second and third point. What is the second and third point? Some genes are tightly linked, some genes are loosely linked. We saw in the case of cross A and cross B, cross A indicate tightly linked genes and cross B linked, uh, indicates loosely linked genes. So that was one conclusion he derived from that experiment. The second conclusion was this, the recombination frequency. Tightly linked genes in the F2 generation, remember it is the F2, the result of F2 generation. The recombination frequency was low for tightly linked genes, whereas for loosely linked genes the recombination frequency was higher. That is why cross B has higher recombination frequency. So, what you need do for the uh, examination point of view is do not learn this as such, but you must understand what is cross A. Cross A is a cross between normal and well wild variety drosophila and the characteristic taken into consideration is yellow white. Yellow and white are closely linked, the genes are closely linked. Taking cross B, cross B is a cross between normal and wild variety. It is uh, uh, re related to genes which are distantly located. The gene is white miniature wings, white color with miniature, miniature size, but the genes are very far apart. And you are coming to the conclusion that the recombination frequency in cross A, because they are tightly linked, look at the recombination frequency, just 1.3 percentage, whereas cross B where the uh, genes are loosely linked, look at the recombination frequency, it is little more higher clear. So, what you can conclude from this cross of figure 5.11 is just 2 points 1, we are saying some genes are loosely linked and some genes are tightly linked and second we are talking about the recombination frequency. Where is the recombination frequency high and where the recombination, recombination frequency low? Recombination frequency is high in the case where the genes are loosely linked and it is very low where the uh, genes are tightly linked. So, the second and third point are derived from figure 5.11 or from the comparative dihybrid cross he made in two crosses of drosophila, where in one the characteristic was yellow bodied white color eyes and the other case was the miniature wings, white miniature wings of the wild variety. Okay. So, remember it is normal versus wild variety. The wild variety is indicated with the same alphabet but plus at the superscript. Now, now the fourth and fifth point he derived from another experiment or from another cross. So, here I am going to do a cross between the female and the male drosophila. Okay. So, male drosophila was crossed with the female drosophila. Now, the characteristic of the male drosophila is that they had brown body and red eyes. So, remember this characteristic. They were brown bodied with red eye and females were yellow bodied with white eyes. Okay. These so, it is a dihybrid cross, so parents differing in two characters. So, the male had brown body, female had yellow body, the male has red eyes and the female has white eyes, okay. This was made to cross. Now, the normal conventions I taught you how to derive at the genotype. Now, brown, yellow, which is dominant, can you guess brown is dominant? So, I am going for the regular homozygous. Brown, yellow will be small b, small b. Then, red or white eyes, which is dominant, red. 
so capital r capital r and here small r small r so i have indicated the phenotype and genotype of the male and the female okay now gametes here the gametes will be capital b capital r in circle here small b small r then f1 generation we get capital b small b capital r small r okay now this is the f1 hybrid now what will be this the genotype is revealed what will be the phenotype the phenotype is it is brown bodied red eyed so from this what can we infer that this pattern of inheritance followed first law what is the first law law of dominance that's why capital b small b which was expressed capital b so brown and small capital r small r which was expressed red so it followed law of dominance from this what we can infer law of dominance is satisfied or it would obeys the law of dominance first law second what we can infer it followed in the second law law of segregation of gametes see at the time of gamete formation it separates see the gamete separates there is no double b double r it separates such as gamete receives only one of the allele ok it follows the second law also now third law to find out whether it is obeying the third law we have to go to the f2 generation ok to check whether it is following the third law we have to go for the f2 generation how to proceed to the f2 generation p2 what will be p2 you must uh, do the selfing of the f1 parents f1 offsprings and we can immediately jump to the f2 ratio why because mendel has done dihybrid ratio and we know the dihybrid ratio that mendel concluded was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 mendel's ratio okay so he also expected this ratio okay so this let it be called the expected ratio because it followed the first two laws so he thought when it will follow this law expected ratio was 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so what will be 9 i told you what what should be 9 the maximum will be the dominant parent so 9 will be brown red one will be the recessive parent yellow white and these are the recombinants so you interchange brown with um, brown with uh, uh, white eyes and yellow with red eyes so if i bring that law of independent assortment we had the characteristic brown body red eye and then we have the other parent which is yellow bodied white eye okay these were the two parents so definitely this is 9 as i taught you and this will be 1 now the recombinants the recombinants means you criss cross this and this so we have brown body white eye then next we have to criss cross this okay so we get the recombinants we have the next one yellow body red eyed so we see here nine will be parental one will also be parental these two will be the recombinants that is 3 and 3 they are called the recombinants new combinants whereas nine and one are parental combination so he also expected to get the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 but he was astonished he didn't get this ratio instead the observed ratio i'll indicate in blue color he observed he got this ratio 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 the ratio he obtained was not 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 it was 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 that means 7 were brown bodied red eyed 7 were yellow bodied white eyed and just two recombinants one recombinant was brown bodied with white eyes and another one was yellow bodied with red eye 
Now his question it did not. So from this he comes it did not follow law of independent assortment. If it did not follow law of independent assortment, we have learned what is law of independent assortment. I'll show it on this. Brown is free and can go with red and white. And yellow is free and can go with red and white. Okay, I've scribbled over this to show explain the law of independent assortment. That is the the pairs of characters are independent and they can assort with one another independently. Okay, so if it does not follow law of independent assortment, then it should have been like this way. Opposite of law of independent assortment. So we are rewording it independent, so it's dependent. Brown will only go with red and yellow will only go with white. So brown will only go with red and yellow will only go with white. So we have to actually get 8 and 8. Should we get the recombinance? 0, 0. Because they are opposite of independent assortment. Did not follow the law of independent assortments. It should be opposite, completely linked. Brown is completely linked with red. Yellow is completely linked with white. We said physical association of genes on a chromosome. So they are linked. They are not free. They cannot detach and assort independently. So it should be actually 8 is to 0 is to 0 is to 8. But no, he found with many experiments, many number of times he conducted this experiment, still he got it like this way. 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7. From this what he understood is 1, it did not follow law of independent assortment, but it followed law of dominance and law of segregation of gametes. Then why he was trying to find out the answer, then why did the recombinants, two recombinants appear? One, this model that is brown bodied white eyed and the other one yellow bodied red eyed. Why did they arise? Then during this time he was observing through the microscope the movement of chromosomes and he found out crossing over. And then the answer to this why there were the recombinants is because of crossing over. So once again he derived at the fourth and fifth point by working across a dihybrid cross between brown bodied red eyed males with yellow bodied white eyed females. So once again the fourth and fifth conclusions. What is the fourth and fifth con conclusion? Recombination is caused due to crossing over and uh, linked genes follow the two laws of uh, Mendelism but does not follow the law of independent assortment. He derived at this by his experiment with uh, by a dihybrid cross between a brown bodied red eyed male with a yellow bodied uh, white eyed female. So once again I am indicating the parents slowly I am telling you the parents in this cross were males were having brown body with red eyes, females were having yellow body with white eyes and look at the genotype it followed law of dominance so it is easily to, easy to derive the genotype see the genotype capital B, capital B, capital R, capital R and there small b, small b, small r, small r. Then the gametes, second step is gametes. Look at the gametes, the gametes had one b and one r, here also one small b and one small r, okay. And then the F2 generation, okay. So till here it was clear it was following Mendel's pattern, okay. From here he understood, okay it is following Mendel's, what Mendel had the, derived the laws, it was followed correctly, law of segregation of gametes and law of independent assortment. So then he thought, okay let us, uh, he thought of continuing to the F2 generation, so the same format he continued. P2 was done by selfing, that is heterozygous brown bodied male with heterozygous, that means uh, heterozygous brown bodied red eyed male was crossed with another heterozygous, selfing was done. And so we know from Mendelian's uh, law we understood that the expected ratio should be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 but surprisingly it was not 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 the ratio was totally different okay so we have expected ratio observed ratio and assumed ratio Because it was similar to Mendelian dihybrid cross, he expected the ratio to be 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. But what was the observed ratio? 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7, which was totally deviating from the Mendelian ratio. Then he assumed, what he assumed? It, from this he concluded that it does not follow law of independent assortment. So if it does not follow just the opposite law of independent assortment, so it should be dependent, so it completely linked. 
so what it was he assumed it to be 8 is to 0 is to 0 is to 8 now he was wondering if it is completely linked this should not be any chance for recombinance and why did the recombinance arise so with the at the same time it was during this time the microscope was discovered they could see the movement of chromosomes at different stages of meiosis they observed the prophase stage the leptotene zygotene pacotene diplotene diakinase and he saw the process of crossing over so the conclusion of this why the recombinance arises due to crossing over I hope this is clear. So, once again I am reiterating the five conclusions he derived from two important crosses that was very historical in the field of genetics. So, first conclusion he brought out the definition for linkage. What is linkage? Physical association of genes on a chromosome is called linkage. It is between two genes. See, I have shown A and B. In A, you can see the genes apart and B, you can see the genes little more closer. So, second point, some genes are tightly linked and some genes are loosely linked. Then, third point is from the F2, like uh, uh, he inferred from the cross, dihybrid cross, the F2 generation, what was the recombination frequency? He found that the tightly linked gene shows low recombination frequency and loosely linked gene shows high recombination frequency and this was derived from this cross. He made simultaneous cross between wild and normal variety and he derived at this conclusion by making a comparison. So, only what you need know is the recombination frequency. The recombination frequency obtained in cross A where the genes were tightly linked was very low compared to the cross where the, re, uh, the genes were loosely linked. Uh, look at the recombination frequency 37.2. Why there was this? Because in first case on cross A, the two genes, which were the two genes, two colors, they were closely linked. Whereas in the second case, the two genes, white miniature wings were distantly located. And the crosses in both the cases, it is a cross between a normal variety with a wild variety. Then next, the fourth conclusion, as I told you, is recombination is caused due to crossing over and lastly he found that linked genes follow Mendel's law of dominance, Mendel's law of segregation of gametes but does not flaw, uh, follow the law of independent assortment and these two uh, fourth and fifth point was derived by a cross between a male and female drosophila. The characteristic of the male is brown bodied red eyes was crossed with yellow bodied white eyes. Look at the genotypes and F1 generation. Till F1 generation it was correctly following Mendelian pattern. So, he understood followed law of dominance, law of segregation of gametes. So, he expected that it will follow law of independent assortment. So, he continued till the F2 generation, but surprisingly he found that it deviated from the expected ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. He found the ratio to be 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7. So, he assumed if it was linked, completely linked, opposite of law of independent assortment, he should get the ratio 8 is to 0 is to 8. Then why this recombinant arised? The answer to that was crossing over. So, all you need to know is the conclusions derived from his two experiments and also what is important to know is these five points should be whenever any questions regarding linkage you just address these five points and specifically they give to these two crosses in the form of diagrams or these two uh, crosses in the form of description or if they ask how did they infer recombination frequency just you need not learn anything till here just say a cross was made between a comparative cross, dihybrid cross was made between two types of crosses, a cross between normal and wild variety where the characteristics were yellow white, yellow body white eyes and the other cross be indicated uh, again between normal and wild variety where the characteristic was white miniature wings. So, characteristic is same but only thing one is normal, the other one is wild variety and just say that in the first cross the two genes were closely linked, in the second case the two genes were tightly, um, were loosely linked. As a result, 
what happened the recombination frequency finally obtained here so you concentrate at the percentage you have to learn the percentage in the first cross the percentage was 98.7 parental and recombinance was 1.3 percentage second case the cross b 62.8 was parental and the recombinance was 37.2 that these figures also you have to remember by heart so you can derive the conclusion that tightly linked genes shows low recombination frequency and loosely linked genes shows high recombination frequency then so that is the experiment to, at which you derived second point and third point and fourth and fifth point is derived by from the cross where he crossed a male and a female male with brown body red eyes and female with yellow body white eyes he derived the fourth and fifth point all together you have to just learn these five points properly and any cross put across you just bring these conclusions clear i hope you have understood linkage which Uh, followed mendelian pattern but follow the law of dominance follow the law of segregation of gametes but did not follow law of independent assortment so this was a landmark in genetics where uh, thomas hunt morgan made his experiments on drosophila melanogaster don't forget even to learn the advantages of drosophila melanogaster which, which was told in the beginning of the video the five advantages i hope you have understood this pattern which is a seventh pattern Uh, deviating from mendelian pattern of inheritance thank you